Hi, I'm Eric Citrenbaum, and this is the BC COVID-19 Modeling Group's COVID Model Projections for February 17th, 2022. Don't forget to look us up on Twitter so you can incorporate us into your algorithmically siloed view of the world. Uh, I won't give you the quick reminder of who we are. This slide says it. You can look over it slowly by hitting pause, but these are the people. We're an independent group of academics and others, dot, dot, dot. Here is our overview for this report. I'm not going to go through this as an overview because I'm going to try out a new format for this video, mostly because I don't have a lot of time. And so I'm going to start right away on the first page and give you an abridged version of the message here. So there is a new variant around BA2, which is a sublineage of uh, the Omicron. We've seen BA1 in British Columbia. BA2 is a better transmitter, um, and it's not thought to escape immunity any more so than BA1. And what that means is that the immunity that we've built over the last month or so to Omicron in British Columbia is going to help avoid a huge impact from BA2, but the additional transmissibility is going to lead to a bit of an echo peak or wave on the back of BA1, and I'll show you a plot of that. Uh, here's just an overview of what it's doing in other provinces. You can see here, it's basically BA2 has appeared roughly the same times, but for some reason is slowest moving in BC, quicker in Ontario, and fastest in Alberta. Um, and what it's doing in BC is starting to rise as we've seen a lot of cases of BA1 already here. All right, so this is an analysis from Dean Carlin from Denmark. And what he's showing is that uh, BA1 was uh, faster moving than Delta, but that advantage um, attenuated with time. So it started off with a 28% per day growth advantage that dropped to 16 and later 11. So there was a gradual change. Um, uh, and you can see here BA2's growth advantage over BA1. So it's got a positive slope. That means there's a uh, a selective advantage and that's at about 11 percent per day and um, there's another variant that hasn't really been talked about quite as much which is BA.1.1 which is a sublineage of the one we've seen here and that one is faster moving than BA1 as well but not as dramatically so as BA2. Here is Dean Carlin's analysis of what's going on in Denmark these days. Denmark is a popular place to look because they've recently reopened and are seeing all kinds of dramatic behavior. So on the left here, you see the linear scale and what you see in green, the dots, are the case data um, from Denmark over the last few months. And what Dean has done is he's fit the model and he's showing the total in a green curve through that data. But that's composed of three separate pieces. The orange curve down here is the number of Delta cases. The purple is the number of Omicron BA1 cases. And the magenta is the number of Omicron BA2 cases. So you can see Delta has largely petered out and is kind of irrelevant now in, um, in Denmark. The BA1 rose and reached a peak uh, right near you know, early January or late December, and then has been on the decline ever since. And, um, you know, coming in right behind that and rising quite dramatically was the Omicron BA2 variant, which has now reached a much higher peak and is on its way down most likely here now. And so adding those three curves, one, two, and three, together, we see the green curve, which is fitting through the data, and what you see in that is an early peak, which is the BA1 peak, followed by a late BA2 peak. Okay, so what's lost in this picture down here is the hospitalization data. So that's what is shown in this panel. Uh, this is better shown on the log scale here. So you can see it's expanded out the hospitalization data 
down here. The same, this up here is the same as what we were just talking about here, the case data. In addition to fitting that case data, what Dean has done is he's also um, fit the hospitalization data and you know sort of back engineered the three component parts in terms of hospitalization. So you can see the Delta hospitalizations, the BA1 hospitalizations, and the BA2 hospitalizations. And in that process of fitting the hospitalization data, he's estimated the relative severity of BA2 to BA1 to be about 0.7. There's still some uncertainty there, but that suggests that BA1 is, um, you know, no more severe and it's possibly less severe than BA1, which was already less severe than Delta. Okay, so um, so what, what was seen in Denmark was, uh, well, at least according to Dean's multivariant model, was a first peak followed by a second peak, and the first peak corresponded to BA1 and the second peak corresponding to BA2. So how do we understand that? Uh, in a little bit more detail. This is uh, work from Sally Otto. Uh, so what we're, what we're looking at is, and this is what's happened in um, BC, we have in light red here, uh, the shaded region, and I've outlined it there. That's what is the, um, the Omicron BA1 variant. And that's the wave that we've seen, and we're most likely past the peak of that in BC but we have BA2 that's creeping in. And so the question being asked here and uh, answered in a sort of parameter dependent way is uh, what is BA2 going to do? So if BA2 comes in far enough, late enough after the peak of BA1, then there'll be a lot of immunity to Omicron already built by BA1 and BA2 will have only a slight advantage and only fill in a little bit on the backside of that peak. The earlier BA2 invades in BC, the fewer people will be already immune because of the presence of BA1, and that will allow a greater spread um, to happen. And if it's introduced here early enough, then we could get, instead of the peak that we've seen, we could get a secondary peak. Um, and so um, that is uh, yet to be seen where we're at, but it, it looks like we're in the late regime just from the, uh, the data I showed on an earlier slide. So um, this slide is illustrating where you should expect to see, uh, you know, where are we at when, where's the halfway point of a wave? Um, so it's tempting to assume that the peak marks the halfway point. And so that um, you might guess that the number of people that have been infected before the peak is equal to the number of infected people after the peak. So even with a single variant, that's not necessarily true because the uphill dynamics are not necessarily the same as the downhill dynamics. One is about transmission and the other is about recovery. But in this case where you have two sublineages that are both present and maybe present at different times, you get an even more complicated phenomenon. In the case of late introduction, you can see that the, um, the halfway point in terms of number of people in, of inf number of people infected actually occurs after the peak. So the assumption that because we're past the peak means it's okay to reopen is not necessarily true. You're only halfway through it or not even halfway through it by the time you're past the peak. But of course, if you have a different uh, point of introduction, then that phenomenon can change. In other words, you could have 50% uh, of the population infected before you hit the, um, the peak of the sort of combined wave. So the dynamics can be quite complicated and, um, and it's, uh, it's not safe to assume that being past the peak um, is uh, means that we're safe. Really, uh, you know, reopening any time on the downslope just introduces the possibility of a secondary peak being generated because the measures, uh, removal of measures could lead to, increase or will it lead to increased transmission. So this slide actually illustrates uh, what I was just referring to before. So if we had um, you know, a constant transmission or constant contact rate from uh, the 
the, the, uh, the point of transition here back in December. So when measures were put in place, people's behavior changed. And if that behavior stayed the same, this is the projected time course of infections. But if we then were to reopen at some point during that wave, for example, here, the, the, um, the branching off point here is suppose we had uh, reopened sometime in mid-late January, we would have had a large peak on the back of what we thought was the peak. And, and as you wait later into the decline at the other side of the peak, you can see subsequent peaks that rise just because of the reopening. So as you have more contacts, you have more transmissions and more transmissions mean that you have, um, you have a number of susceptible people who are now um, going to get sick that wouldn't have otherwise. And you can see that as you wait longer down the backside of the peak, you'll get, uh, well, you don't actually uh, necessarily get a lot fewer people infected, but they get infected over time more gradually, which um, is beneficial in terms of avoiding hospitalization overload, for example. Um, it's a little hard to tell here uh, exactly what's happening, but mm, my eyeball guess is that the area under this curve, which corresponds to the additional number of people post reopening, is greater than the number of people in this hypothetical reopening, and again, greater than the number in this one. Okay, but you can see certainly that the, the peak number of infections is dramatically different depending on how far down the backside of that wave you reopen. Okay, so this is a, an interesting update. We've been watching the 70 plus population, which you know we hope and assume here are uh, getting tested more accurately than everybody else. And we've been using that cor to correct for what's going on in the under 70 uh, age groups. And you can see now that the under 70 is coming down quite slowly, but it is coming down. Um, so that's, uh, that's good news and suggestive of the fact that we're past the peak of the Omicron wave now. And this is a breakdown um, across health authorities where you can see uh, that, for example, in some health authorities, we haven't actually quite started declining in that 70 plus group, but we have in others like Vancouver Coastal seeing decline, Fraser and the Interior are all seeing decline. Vancouver Island, uh, I'm circling the wrong bit. So Vancouver Island and the Northern Health Authority are not yet seeing that decline. So hospital trends. Um, so here in green is a number of cases. And again, as we've mentioned previously, uh, this, this region of the graph here is not a great... Uh, not a great estimate of number of infections in the population because that's um, that's after the time where uh, we stopped doing uh, full spectrum testing across the population. It was only those at greater risk and, and those over age 70 who were encouraged to still keep getting tested. But what you see here is the hospitalization data. So this is uh, hospital occupancy and ICU occupancy. And you can see that both of those are starting to come down. So uh, just a look at hospitalization, uh, hospital projections for Alberta and BC. So in the upper panels, you see the hospital admissions data in Alberta with Dean's multivariant fit. And if you recall from early on in the slides, uh, I was showing that BA2 is now dominant there. What you see in the hospitalization data here is that um, uh, admissions and occupancy are, um, are all declining in Alberta despite the presence of BA2. And in BC, you can see <laughs> uh, this sort of crazy large cloud of data here is our hospital admissions data. I laugh because it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, and uh, the hospital occupancy, which is a little bit cleaner, um, but in, in both cases, you can see that there's some indication that uh, we are also on the decline. Although we have not seen BA2 here uh, become dominant yet, 
And so um, that still remains to be seen what kind of impact it has. It may have an impact on the backside where we get an echo bump due to increases in cases or infections due to BA2. So here is an update on boosters. There's a, oh, and vaccination. Uh, not a lot of, you know, very slow progress on first and second doses. Although um, my daughters are now somewhere here. Here, let's see where they're, somewhere here. Uh, twice dosed now. Um, and uh, boosters are moving along a little bit slower than they've been, but still moving along. So um, that's increasing the immunity in the population and hopefully going to have some maybe minimal now effect on um, the tail end of BA1 and the onset of the BA2 wave. So another picture showing our booster progress, which you can see again, as last time I showed the slide like this, there was a peak in number of people getting boosters sometime in mid January, and that is dropping off as indicated by the 3% figure on the previous slide. And a summary with the key messages, I'll, I'll go through this one just as a, a wrap up. So, uh, so the cases in the greater than 70 age population are, uh, those cases are now, or those infection numbers are now declining. I guess cases, cases are now declining. Um, although that's not the case, you know, all throughout British Columbia, um, that's largely Vancouver Coastal Health and Fraser Health. Um, the, we have declines in the number of people hospitalized, um, and, uh, that's a good indicator that many parts of BC are now past the Omicron peak, not all areas, but uh, hopefully soon. Um, so biggest sources of uncertainty over the next few weeks and whether we'll see you know, a, a, a return to increasing numbers. Uh, we have the reopening as of today and um, and you know we're not too sure exactly how big an impact BA2 will have. It might be a small echo bump, or it might be uh, a mountain in the distance beyond our first Omicron peak. We have yet to see that. Uh, what is certain is that Omicron remains prevalent in BC still, and we should uh, expect to see a lot more infections. We may be past the peak, but that doesn't even mean that we're halfway through the number of infections we'll see from Omicron. <clears throat> so we're still we're still endorsing the idea of measures to reduce risk, and uh, that includes masking and booster shots, you know, avoiding crowded areas, poorly ventilated areas, and so on. Well, that wraps up what we've got to say for the Omicron wave currently, and I hope you keep healthy until our next report in a few weeks. <laughs>